I am excited to bring to you today uh, the BookTube Spin. Uh, this was uh, something that Rick Rick McDonald has has uh, is behind. Uh, it is the idea that you compile a list of twenty books, uh, numbered from one to twenty, uh, and on January the thirty first, he is going to spin a wheel. Uh, and it'll randomly land on a certain number, and that will be the book that you will, will get read uh, bet from uh, b between February and March. But between those, between February, beginning of February and the end of March, that's how much time you have to read this book. I like this idea because it's kind of this thing to encourage you to pick off books off your shelf that you've just never gotten to, or books that intimidate you, or um, just for whatever reason you've just you need a kick in the pants to get to this book. And it gives it this kind of this, this fun element of randomness. Uh, we all get to kind of share, oh God, what book did I end up with? Um, but also just sort of the excitement of like, oh, hey, maybe I, I get to read something uh, a little out of my comfort zone. Um, there's some of these books here that aren't that scary, but uh, there's other ones here that are plenty scary. Uh, I am going to, in this abbreviated version of this, uh, vid video to just hold up the books and try and kind of not go on about them because if I do, it'll we'll be here for half an hour. So yes, let's start off. He encourages you split it into kind of like groups of four uh, little categories. Uh, these aren't groups of four, but they're the little categories that occurred to me and I'm counting them down. I'm counting them down. So number 20, we have Elsa Moranti's Arturo's Island, uh, Italian, Italian novelist, uh, published in 1957. Uh, number two, uh, a book that I picked, I picked out because of its title. Uh, I, I bought because of its title, the heart is a lonely hunter. Um, number, did I just say number, number 19? Yes. See, messed up already. Uh, number 17, Inferno, uh, a poet's novel by the poet Aline Miles. Um, uh, for, uh, number 17, we have what might be the good, Norman Mailer. I've bailed on a lot of other Norman Mailer, but this one's supposed to be good. Uh, is the armies, the armies of the night, um, uh, Vietnam protests in 1967. Uh, number 16, I have a bit of, a bit of Kipling, uh, the phantom rickshaw, rickshaw, uh, a book where I noticed that as I was flipping through it, that maybe a woman was the last one to read this book because of the bookmark, uh, which, um, yeah, that's the that's the bookmark, which I thought was kind of hilarious in uh, this uh, this uh, uh, um, poet and a novelist of the the great the English Empire. There, I thought that was hilarious. Um, number number fifteen, I've got the Birthday Boys with a sticker from A and B Sound, which I is uh, a what was a local um, uh, records and uh, a record store uh, in Victoria, where I worked in the back room in the late eighties, early nineties as a data entry clerk. Uh, and have I had that, had this book this long? Perhaps, perhaps uh, I haven't perished though, like uh, Scott <laughs> and uh, the Antarctica, which is what happens in that one um, for, uh, then I go into my big books, my big books, which are, um, the Wind Up Bird Chronicles by Haruki Murakami. I've been kind of slowly reading, very slowly reading his books in uh, novels in, in uh, chronological order of publishing date. Um, and um, I probably about five or six years ago, I stopped doing that, but I still have all of the books and I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed them, but it's been a long time, especially as a reader. I feel like maybe I've maybe had some shifts there. So it'll be interesting to go back to her Haruki Murakami. See, I'm, I'm starting to talk again. Okay. This one I will talk about because at number 13, lucky number 13, I've got Don Quixote by Cervantes. Uh, it's a bastard of a book. It's like, uh, I think this, the Edith Gross, Grossman uh, translation, it's 980 pages. One of these classics of world literature. One of these books that I hear a lot of people try and fail. Um, I figure if I'm going to read it, let's, Let's let's kind of. I'm gonna have to build up some steam. Probably gonna have to get an intervention from uh, Alba at Surrealia, who uh, really loves this book and uh, talked about how 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 much fun it was, how funny it was. So, I might need your help, Alba. I might need your help. Oh gosh. Um, 
Number 12 and number 11, we've got our Canadian content. Rick is a Canadian. I am a Canadian. So you got to have some Canadian content on your list. Uh, it's for CRTC reasons. We, we can't really argue one way or the other. Uh, so what I have is number 12 uh, is uh, Complicated Kindness by Miriam Toes. And at uh, number 11, I've got A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery. Uh, yes, yes, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to go into it right now. I've got Difficult, the Difficult Book category. For whatever reason, uh, these books have... I've kind of like gone, uh, they, they, they've, they've weirded me. They freaked me out that way. Uh, first one is a collection of novellas by science fiction author, Gene Wolf, uh, the Island of Doc, the Island of Dr. Death, uh, and other stories and other stories. And it gets more complicated from there. Um, oh, but then we get into really complicated territory where we get, uh, we get, uh, the loser by Thomas Bernard, uh, which is, uh, it's translated from the German and there are no paragraph breaks. There is just solid text and more solid text and apparently long, complicated sentences and it's the loser. And maybe I will feel like a loser at the end of it. Um, and the next is the Rotters Club by Jonathan Coe. Where are we at? What number are we on? We're at number eight, the Rotters Club by Jonathan Coe. Uh, Eng Eng English author really enjoyed his work in the past. Hopefully, I'll enjoy it in the future. I, but I stopped reading him, so this is me picking him up again. Next, I have uh, Tirza by Arnon Grun Grunberg, uh, a definite troublemaker. Uh, your, your Dutch Dutch writing author who's definitely a troublemaker, uh, provocateur. Uh, who, uh, yes, I will. I will hope hopefully enjoy enjoy this i've enjoyed uh the blue monday silent extras uh the jewish messiah by him so he's not an unknown author to me but i, I know what i'm getting into i know he'll he'll he's gonna make me work okay and uh the final category the final six novels uh novels i have here they're all novels they're all novels for me uh, that's because that's what i have lying around uh are all are all books that booktubers have influenced me to buy and then I've just never gotten around to reading. Uh, number one on that from uh, Sean the Book Maniac. He loved this book. He talked this up in whatever year he was reading. It was like one of his favorite books. But I And I bought it, but I never actually read it, is The Constellation of Vital Phenomena by uh, Anthony Mara. So yes, Sean, I will read this. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see if I, uh, fall in love with it as much as, as you are, or, or I will read it in this, these months, if it comes up, I also will someday, someday read it. See, that's the thing. Uh, the next two are both from, uh, I think Jason, uh, one's a Peter Carey novel, uh, Parrot and Oliver in, uh, America, uh, and, um, Plain Song by Kent Haruf. Uh, yes. So those are my two from, uh, Jason at Old Blues chapter and verse, uh, ones that he's, he influenced me to pick up and yet I never actually read. And then the final three, the final three are, um, but all Rick, all Rick books, uh, books that ha he influenced me to read directly. First one is a, uh, Tad Williams. He is actually doing a readathon, read a, not a readathon, a read along at the moment of the memory, sorrow, and Thorn series, which I just couldn't get it together with. Uh, but I did pick up, I, again, this is a library cast off. So the minimum amount of effort for, uh, what's a very thick, thick little fantasy novel. The first in a series, it's Shadow March, uh, which, um, is apparently it's a uh, Northern men and their, their enemy, the, uh, ageless, uh, Quar, Quar, Q, Q, A, R. Uh, I, I, I like my fantasy usually fairly skinny. Uh, I, I have a, I have a hard time with a big, thick fantasy novels. So even though he kind of enthused me, I didn't enthuse me enough to actually start this. So if number three comes up, I will at least read uh, shadow March, uh, by, uh, Tad Williams. And then, uh, the final two books, uh, have a theme because their Rick is really into New York, New York review books, uh, imprint. Uh, and they come out with these kind of beautiful, beautiful books that he, that Rick, Rick often picks, seems to pick up and show off in his channel uh, and has a couple that he really loves there. Uh, one of the ones that I found while I was in a secondhand bookstore, it was like, Oh, uh, th there's a couple of them here. And one of them was, uh, the long ships by Franz G Benson, which seems to be kind of a historical novel, 
uh, in uh, kind of following kind of a Viking Red Orm. Um, it's got an introduction by Michael Chabon, who is definitely kind of a, a genre ambassador for uh, more genre e-fiction. So uh, I'm, who knows, maybe it'll have a little bit more of a genre feel. Uh, or it could be like uh, Sigrid Unset's um, Kristen Lavin's daughter, which, you know, Hey, I really enjoyed that too. So I can, that's a, that's a Jason book, which I actually did read, uh, un, unprompted. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's number two. And for number one is a book that he's really real, that Rick has really talked up in his, uh, on his channel. And I'll leave a link to his review of it down below, because I think that's what kind of first convinced me to start to pick up a couple of these uh, New York review book things, which is Stoner by uh, John Williams, which uh, I think at the, at the end here, it's like um, driven ever. This is a kind of a middle-aged scholar who driven ever deeper within himself. Stoner re rediscovers the stoic silence of his forebears and confronts an essential solitude. So sounds like a uh, good book for a uh, melancholic soul which uh, I am always up for. That is my tw my 20 books for uh, the BookTube spin, which, yes, um, Rick will be spinning that wheel on the uh, January the uh, 31st, um, and then we'll know what book we're going to be reading for February and March. Uh, will it be Don Quixote? Will it be The Loser? We shall see. We shall see. I, I am going to, I am going to add, I am going to add my own rules to this, which is I will, I will, in the spirit of some of the uh, influencers on this, uh, especially uh, Sean, the book maniac, I reserve the right to bail on a book that isn't working for me. I'm not going to torture myself through two months if I don't like it. But if that happens, I will subtract one and whatever book the next one down is, I will look. And obviously, if it's if it's book number one, and for some reason I hate Stoner, then I would just go to number twenty, which would be uh, Elsa Morante, and do that. And if it's if it's Elsa Morante, I can just go to Hard as a Lonely Hunter uh, and do that and shift around, so I'm not just stuck for misery for that while. But um, this will at least give make me make me seriously give a chance to uh one of the one in 20 books here and really so yes i totally totally uh if you have a chance if we still got kind of a week to go um hopefully by before hopefully it doesn't take me that long to publish this uh to um to come up with your own list uh, and uh, then tune in on uh, Rick's channel. I'll obviously have the links to his announcement video down below it and when he will post post whatever number whatever number it is. I will leave it there. More videos later.